This is going to be our workshop session for the day. It will take place all in this room. So you will go to different rooms tomorrow for the workshop, but this exercise is all in here, so you're in the right place. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing my colleague, Susan Lupo, who is a senior policy associate at Corporation for a Skilled Workforce. She has expertise in community college transformation, systems change, credentialing, and is an expert in design and organizational development. Um, she has 25 years of community college leadership experience and is a bit of a futurist, which is why we chose her for this activity. Uh, to that end, we're going to take all of this context that we've established throughout the day today about the future of education and work and skills and the change and how they're being validated and the fact that if we're reacting to what's current, we're already a little bit behind. We're going to take all that and actually do <laughs> at tables. So. Um, one last note before I turn it over to Susan to run the exercise. We just ask you to be open-minded and be willing to stretch your minds a little bit for this hour, and then you can go out and drink beer and wine after that. Um, tomorrow we have a panel on innovation and disruption, which will be our third of the conference. And those panelists are fairly familiar with doing exercises like this and with design. So Kathleen Delasky, Christopher Kent, Anna Lennart, and Cheryl Grant will be around if you get stuck or you have a question about the exercise or an occupation or the process. So just raise your hand or keep an eye out for one of them. They'll be milling about to help you. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Susan. Yes. Hi. No, you're good. You're good. You get to stay where you are, you know? Don't you love that? A process person that doesn't say, let's count off 200 people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hi, everybody. Um, so here I am. I will apologize. I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'm going to try to stay as focused as possible on the many, many pharmaceuticals that are now coursing through my body. You know, who knew we were going to talk about drugs at the beginning and now here at the end? But, you know, that's the way synergies in the world work. Um, so it's been quite a day, right? I mean, we were living in an extraordinary explanation of a postmodern world, and, and then we moved to the reality of what goes on in the district. Um, and then we had conversations about the supply and demand space that people are working in, trying to think about this new reality that we're all eventually going to have to occupy. Um, and then a panel discussion that, again, circled back to the notion of what equity looks like in the world and where privilege sits. So those were pretty deep and heavy conversations. Now you get to play a little bit, maybe. Um, my good colleague and friend Katie uh, asked me originally to try to design um, a structured scenario building session. And, um, for any of you who are familiar with structured scenario building, it was part of the work that was done in the 1970s by Shell Oil Company to begin to understand how their own obsolescence would occur over a 20 or 30 year period. Structured scenario building is also used by futurists. It's used in the Department of Defense. It's used in many, 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 many occupations. Um, I first encountered it almost 25 years ago. Oh my God, she said 25 years ago. 25 years ago, um, and when I first became a member of the World Future Society. And at that first conference, I encountered Ray Kurzweil. Any of you know who Ray Kurzweil is? Uh, kind of pretty much, yeah, yeah. So Ray's, Ray Kurzweil has been one of those futurists who have been predicting that there will be an endpoint called the singularity. And he actually produced that phrase where human beings and machines combine and ultimately maybe machines become smarter than we are. So that notion terrified me. Um, and I thought, well, you know, any machine could be smarter than I am, I guess, at any point along the way. And I began to think about what the future of work looks like and what the world of work looks like and how people can access it and what the design of those systems might be. Um, so that's been sort of my journey of inquiry. And as Katie said, I also love the notion of design, human-centered design. Are any of you familiar with IDEO? Aha, IDEO, IDEO folk in the room. 
So IDEO is an extraordinary company. If you don't know about it, go online and look. They began to really think about human-centered design in terms of solving world problems. So in a social context, how human-centered design can work in a world that we um, often ignore. Um, so at the core of human-centered design is, you know, humanity, what we are and how we sit and feel in the world. Um, one last little story. Uh, in my quest um, to understand what this technology world that was emerging around me would be, um, I also participated in conferences produced by SIGGRAPH. And SIGGRAPH is an international conference that was started in the entertainment industry. Um, and again, 25 years ago, I went to the initial conference, and they have something called a black box. And in the black box, all students that were interested in technology, advancing technology, produced products. This is the first time I really encountered augmented reality. I went in, and there were machines, and I put them on, and I was playing with dolphins, and who knew? Um, and we also found that there were machines that were tactile, that were going to be embedded in clothing, where our wallpaper could move. We could see the conference program by moving our arms and orchestrating it. So our physicality and our physical environment began to interact with the technology in those stages and places. Now fast forward to this period of time. My 10-year-old granddaughter just sent a photograph from a birthday party that she attended. And at that birthday party, she was wearing augmented reality glasses with 15 other little girls not interacting with each other at all, but interacting with the augmented reality. And she loved it. So <laughs> that's the kind of journey. And when we start to think about obsolescence, I don't know if any of you saw the New York Times article well, about five months ago that began to describe that 47% of existing retail jobs may disappear within five to seven years. So as we look at obsolescence and as it moves forward, as we look about the combination between our technology and ourselves, the interface and interaction between our humanity, or lack thereof, once we become machines, that all has implications. So that's the big speech <laughs> at the front of the game. So what Katie said to me is, well, how do we get people to start to explore this um, with, you know, a table uh, grouping and in a big room? And I said, well, how about if we think about something very analog and tactile? So we came up with this idea, and I hope you'll play along just because I need for you to play along. I really, really, really do. Um, so the idea is that at each of your tables, um, you're going to, create and design what a supply-demand ecosystem might look like in 2025. And, and we want you to use your table as your canvas, and you'll be using sticky notes as the content to help shape the design. And I'll give you some clues along the way. Oh, I'm so glad you're smiling. That's so lovely. <laughs> it's, it's so great. So I know this is going to be kind of a very big, deep departure from what we've done in, in the last four hours. But it's also a chance to play. You know, we're adults, but we rarely play a lot. So this is imaginative space. Wherever your imagination can take you, however you can think about this, is fine. There are no right answers. There are no wrong answers. There's just the exploration. There's just the moment to engage in some kind of a creative activity with people who you may or may not know sitting at a table with you. So are you game? Yes. Okay. Are you game? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Ms. Katie. Oh, God. Pictures. At this age, a woman of this age, right? All right. So, there's our, our first slide. Don't you love it? I did the proper slide. It gave you a title. Um, 2025, supply and demand ecosystem. Now, supply and demand implies, right, a linear process, right? Right? So, action, result. Ecosystem, much more complicated. So think about ecosystems. Think about mess. Think about networks. Think about processes that are messy when we get into the, into the design. OK, next slide. So these are purposes. We're going to play a little bit. We're going to synthesize some information and maybe come up with something interesting. Who knows? OK, you ready? Next one. Katie's doing the whole thing over here so I can dance and play. This was how we were going to play it. We're not going to play it like that anymore. I came in the room and thought, nope, this is way too complicated. So what you do with design usually is try to get as simple and elegant as you possibly can. So we're going to play it a little bit differently. Next slide. 
<laughs> Don't you love that? I'm in control. Um, we have identified five, and I'm going to use this horrible old-fashioned analog word, jobs of the future. Okay, so look at those five jobs. We found them. They are predicted. And our wonderful futurists in the room, um, you know, the Rockefeller Foundation article on the future of work identifies these jobs and then what happens when these jobs exist to poor and vulnerable populations. So, the first job up here is our, our robotics human ethicist. At your table, there are PowerPoints that describe and you can read, all right, and this job really requires the rise of cloning and ethically dubious practices. So people are going to be needed to ensure that there's some humanity engaged in that. So that's a job predicted for the future. Another one is a space tour guide. I thought, well, this one probably isn't too much different than, you know, cruising the rapids somewhere. However, it probably is because how it comes about and is executed would be very different. The next one we have is vertical farmers. We already know that's here, right? I mean, many, many vertical farms are being developed. Okay, if we think about people clustering in urban communities, vertical farming becomes a really critical and important part of work. In Detroit, where I live, um, farming, urban farming and vertical farming is becoming one of the ways to, to eliminate the food desert within that area. So vertical farmers and the way they come about and think about farming is, is one of the jobs of the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, I love this one because we kind of talked about it today. Um, the statistician, well, there's going to be a waste data handler. What do you do with wasted data? How do you identify data that needs to go away? How do you kill data? I mean, we're all told that our data records are forever. So somebody's going to have to manage data and understand how to turn it into waste. And what does that look like? What does data waste become? Where is it stored? Can you find it again? I mean, is it a dump somewhere? Who knows? But it's a, it's a job of the future. And then the last one, and I think all of you may appreciate that in the educational space that we li live in, is that there would be a classroom avatar manager. So how and where teaching and learning occurs will probably be delivered through avatars of some sort. But how do you match a human being with an avatar? Or does the human being create the avatar? You're all looking at me. <laughs> so these are jobs that are predicted for the future. They will likely be described as work and they will likely be described as competencies. Okay, so what I would like you to do at your table is look at these five jobs and choose one that you want to focus on. So y'all get to talk at the table for a minute. Choose a job, any job. social strata based on this combination of. All right, they're all talking. Yep. Yeah, all right. The, uh, there are some serious ethical yeah. and philosophical concerns about what it means to be human. I right? know. Yeah, and eventually, and we're already augmented. Okay, about two more seconds to decide. No, no laboring over decisions. Rapid prototyping is now entering the room.
Okay, have we all decided what our future work is? I got a thumbs up over here. All right, at your tables, everybody's got a decision. Oh, and what I really want to do is ask everybody what they chose, but we don't have time. Um, but at some point, we may. So we all got a choice, right? We've got a job or work of the future that we're going to focus on for this exercise. Cool. Now, we really are <laughs> going to go into an analog mode. Um, as I said before, IDEO is one of my idolized uh, corporations, design corporations, and they still use analog technology, and they use what's on your table, sticky notes. Y'all have some sticky notes? Sticky notes and pens, tactile. Okay, and I want you to think of your table as your canvas. All right, so you need to probably move stuff so that you can design on the table. Next slide. Next slide. There we go. And the questions are really tiny because their slides are notes. Oh, pages. okay. So do you want me to read the questions? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I can do that. Just say, I know they're tiny. Okay. All right. Okay, has everybody cleared their space? So what I'd like you to do is individually gather up a few sticky notes and as quickly as you can, you've got your job in front of you, right? Have you got your job? You know what it is? Everybody knows what it is? Okay. So the first design question is, and, and our little person, notice this little person is kind of an interesting mix of stuff. So our little person is asking, how do I find about, out about the work? So the first process in the ecosystem is discovery. How does one find out about this work that you're focusing on in 2025? Not today, not tomorrow, but in 2025. And so generate on your sticky notes as many ideas as you can about how a human, not a human-robot combination, but a human would find out about the work that you're focusing on, okay? We'll give you about, oh, five, seven minutes to generate that content. Okay, have at it. I see we fart. Am I okay in the land of future Yes, yeah, you're doing great. All right, well, you jump in here if you need... Need so help. Mostly harmless. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you have futurists hidden amongst you. Did you know that? You have futurists prowling the floor. If you have questions of the futurists that have been hidden amongst you, they're here. Futurists, you want to raise your hands? Right? So if you need ideas, they're, they're, they're more than willing to come and help you. Okay, think about what, how I find that work. Go crazy. Should we give them five minutes? Oh, okay. We need five. So we have at least One, until five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe a okay. little bit after. Five minutes for each path. Okay.
got a question? Okay, we're cross-fertilizing. Somebody asked how learning disabled people would find out about that. There wouldn't be any, is the answer. over there said there's a data wrangler in our ranks. So, okay, wrangling data. And then somebody else asked, well, if you're disabled, how do you find out? And my response was, you won't be disabled because you have a chip in your brain that corrects your disability. So, hey. How we doing? Good, yeah. It's kind of cool. Okay, because this is rapid prototyping, have you kind of talked about what you wrote down? And you have not. So what I'd like you to do now is take those sticky notes and cluster them on a space on your table, have everybody look at the sticky notes, and then we're going to move on to the next phase of design. So what you want is those processes and tools clustered together on your table. Like you're making a map. It's, it's doing something. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I, you know, you get a second win when you have to, like I said, the show must go on. At least I'm not singing a musical theater piece right now, and I've done that before. Yeah, so. Okay, have you clustered it? This clustering of this of this process and tools on your table. All right. Next slide. What? No, nothing yet. I feel like I've lost control of the room. Okay, we're going to move on to, to design question two. Okay, so cluster your competencies, your work, your descriptions, your processes. Have I got everybody? Not necessarily. Hey, okay, all right, we're moving to the next design question. Same process, sticky notes, next design question. This one you ought to be able to think about in terms of our current reality, stretch your brain. We're all asking questions about what the competency as currency is gonna look like. So this is how I find out about the work. How do I get the competencies so that I can fulfill the obligations of that work. So your next cluster in your ecosystem is finding competencies and acquiring them. Okay, so that's your next cluster. This is how I find out about it. This is how I get the skill sets that I need. Okay, cool, have at it. Yep.
Yeah, yeah. She's like totally in it. <coughs> Poor Evelyn, she's stuck at a table with like Carol's. Possibly. I'll be lucky if I'll be able to get help. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it depends on where we are right in the world. <clears throat> you guys are rocking it. Oh my God, this is so cool. Well, you know what, in the end, you can organize your ecosystem, right? Just make sure you've got your clusters clustered. You got it. Good. Chatter, chatter, chatter. I think people are thinking. Some people put uh, tablespoons in front, so I don't know. You may be the only robotic human that has this I should use a seat. I love this. So what job did you have to Space to think about. It is. At the World Future Conference about four years ago, they started to talk about the strata within society, like what kind of a robot you'd be, and then what kind of an enhanced human you would be, and what that would mean in terms of your social status, your compensation, and where you work in the world. Wait, what do you mean? I'm sorry? What, what do you mean? Yeah, because human, eventually, they're predicting that human beings' bodies will be combined with augmented... Oh, like cyborg. Like cyborg. Okay. Yeah. So you have these stratifications within your ethical based on... Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. And I'm going to take one of these because I'm following you. Thank you. What time is it? We gotta get to three. Somebody okay, we're ready to go to question, design question three. Design question three. How will employers 
locate me or how will I find employers? How will employers locate me? How will I find employers? So we had a little bit of that conversation today, right? There might be a universal pool, but within this field, how will employers find me? How will I find employers? Yep. As you're working, it'll help to cluster the answers to each question. So cluster one when you're done, put two together when you're done, cluster three together when you're done, because five questions is a lot of stickies. <laughs> yeah, what were you going to say? Um. And when you cluster, you can put things in circles. They don't have to be in lines. This is no ecosystem. This is a bunch of lines. I like it. So we will, in the picture. The picture is going to show clusters. And then we're going to ask them to cluster their their ecosystem parts, what overlaps, what doesn't, and then they'll get their pick their pa so the table picture. Are going to be sort of all over the table, connecting things or whatever. Yeah, so what would happen is if I were doing this, I'd put all my sticky notes for question one here. Uh -huh. I'd put all my sticky notes for question two here. Right. Three here, four here, human in the middle, and then <clears throat> use objects on the table to show the lines. We're going to have to ask them to, to, to do that label. Number one, two. Are they emailing it to someone? That's what I thought. Who do they email it to? Get 12 pictures, 15 pictures. Fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I'll just throw cards on the table. Okay. Okay, I'm going to rush you to number four, question number four. Question number four is how will I get paid? How will I get paid? I'm moving you along. Question four, how will I get paid?
How will I get paid is where we should be. We've got one more design question, then we're gonna put our systems together. I love it. I can't believe we did this in an hour. You go, girlfriend. You did it. We did it. It's so good. Have you kept moving? But it's enough time that they can yep. rack their brain. Yeah. How do I get paid in by who is really interesting? Right. Who's paying for the work? Is it all just kind right. of right? How do I get paid and by whom? Hate to rush you along. Whoops, Katie. We've got one, two. Take it down to the very end, Katie. Take it to the very end. Take your email. Take your email to the very end. Take your email. Okay. Right. After the map, there we go. After the last green slide. Right. So sure let question five. Yep. Okay. Okay. Here's the last question, and this one is really a big one. How will the work disappear and get replaced by new work? This category of the ecosystem is obsolescence. How will the work disappear and get replaced by new work? We're not drinking right after this. I know. I have to listen to Sharon Lou, who's a snooze. Yep. <clears throat> 
Whatever. We might be able to. Okay, what I'd like to ask you to do now, even though we could do this for another couple of hours, is organize your five design questions on the table like a system with a, with a human in the center. So this is just a little bit of a model, how it could look. We're going to ask you to label question one, two, three, four, five after you've done your design. And then we're going to ask you to take pictures of your ecosystem and send them to us so that we can share your wonderful collective thinking. All right, so this was my attempt at saying, what would this look like? So maybe my compensation is an avatar upgrade. There might be different kinds of ways to think about your ecosystem map on your table. So look at your, look at your answers organize them into an ecosystem picture, and then we're going to take photographs of them, okay? So that we can see what great content you've generated. It doesn't necessarily have to look like this, but you want a human being at the center. You can use anything on your table to represent the human being. You can use Dixie cups. You can use water pitchers. Anything at the table. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's wondrous. I love this. You are wondrous. Okay, we've only got about five minutes, and I hate to be a taskmaster, but you created some pretty cool things. So let's get a system picture with a human at the center and how these things relate to one another. You can use pens, you can use Dixie cups, you can use anything to represent the ecosystem. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Is that five? Okay. And I think his phone is. I'll have Katie come over and do it. Awesome. I'll have Katie awesome. do it. Okay. Yeah. So, does somebody have a phone that can take a picture of this table, too? Yeah. I can do that? Okay. Okay, we're going to come around and look at these ecosystem pictures, designs. Oh, this is so cool. <gasps> and then the other thing that would be helpful. We don't know what job you chose. So if you have the job on the person, that's OK. Oh, you guys, this is so freaking cool. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. People are drawing arrows, dotted lines. We've got pens. Oh my gosh, this is. It's a really far distance from like us actually getting paid. It's a huge distance from getting paid. But this is so cool.
like hope everybody cares about themselves. Oh, okay. Which is good. Yeah. Once you're done, you'll take a photo. We'll give you Katie's address to send it to. But I would also suggest that when you walk out for your break, walk around and look at these tables because it's like totally cool. <laughs> Seems like people got there. Anyway, are we going to have them say anything? You have some time. If you want them to, if you want, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes. So once you've taken your photo, I have a question. Are you interested in having a kind of collective debrief? Or would you like to just sort of walk around and look at stuff? Either way is fine. Walk around. Everybody walk around the art gallery. Cool. We got to take say. pictures of them walking around. Be sure to take your picture of your wonderful ecosystem. Send it to Katie Hall. That's khall at skilledwork.org. And then cruise the gallery. Thank you for rubbing your germs all over me. Yeah, I've been fighting a cold for a few weeks. I got sick like the day before I took my wife to the Grand Canyon for her birthday. Holy crap. That's like, not coughed my way through the Grand Canyon in Sedona, but I'm survived. I love it. <sighs> I just got back from Palm Springs like yesterday morning. That's amazing. You're, you're doing all this travel. Can I have a tattoo? It's working. Any of that good stuff. We need to just take a vacation. Should we like hang out tomorrow? Well, you could have told me you were coming to town. You never told me you were well, coming was, to this. Okay, guys, walk around, look at the tables, and then we're going to take our last break.